Being a teacher for over a decade, I've come to notice a pattern. And this pattern are the 10 mistakes that amateurs make that keeps them from sounding like a pro and more like an amateur, even though they've been playing for a year, two years, or beyond. In this video, I'm going to share with you those 10 mistakes and what you can do to either fix them or avoid them. By the way, I am Kadrian, the Sax Habit Coach. I help beginner saxophone players learn faster and get better on their saxophones by using practice habits and routines. So number one is that professionals use the 80-20 rule. They spend 80% of the time in preparation and spend 20% of the time playing. Amateurs, the first mistake they make is to spend 20% of the time in preparation and 80% of the time playing. And the playing that they usually do is that of playing that which they already know. The same old songs that they learned two or three years ago, the same technique, the same licks. They can play in F major, G major, C major, maybe D major, but they don't stretch themselves beyond that to, let's say, play in D flat major or F sharp major or C sharp major. Everything has to be stuck in the four or five keys that they know. Professionals, on the other hand, understand that they need to go beyond just that. And so let's take for example, the World Championships that have just ended in Oregon a few weeks ago, when you think about the women who went into the 100 meter races, right? Let's take the 100 meter finals, for example. Those ladies spent hundreds, thousands of hours in preparation to run a race that lasted, the slowest time was 11.03 seconds. So imagine going into a race that is going to last for less than a quarter of a minute and spending thousands of hours in preparation with the goal of winning a medal, setting or breaking a world record, and also collecting a bag of cash, right? It takes a lot of time. So it would be ridiculous to think that you'd be able to sound like a pro if you just know a handful of scales, a handful of licks, and so on. So in order to sound more like a pro and less like an amateur, you need to start spending 80% of your time in preparation, focusing on that which is going to get you there. Number two is that professionals practice deliberately. Amateurs noodle, okay? They go into the practice room, the amateurs, and what they do, they noodle. They spend an hour, two hours, three hours noodling away. The professional understands that he needs a specific outcome and a specific result, and therefore he has to be focused. What is it? A scale? What is it? A chord? What is it? A lick? What is it? A pattern? It needs to be focused. While the amateur goes in there, he doesn't have an idea, so he spends all his time noodling, and therefore what happens? He gets better at noodling, and so he becomes a good noodler, less of an improviser and less of a musician. So in order to get better and to sound less like an amateur and more like a pro, you need to stop noodling and be more deliberate when you go into the practice room. Number three, professionals are goal-oriented. The amateurs use what I call wishful thinking. So the professional understands that he needs to hit a target because he cannot go outside and shoot in thin air and hope to hit a target. If you want to hit a bullseye, then you need a target, right? If you aim at nothing, then you're going to hit nothing, okay? The professional understands also, that his goal or goals needs to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and they need to be time-bound. The goal of the professional is not just to run a single race. He wants to be a champion. The goal of the professional is not just to cook a meal. He wants to be an executive chef. The goal of the professional is not just to write an article. She wants to be an author. The goal of the pro is not just to improvise. She wants to be a musician who improvises. There is a difference, right? So 
Instead of wishing, oh, I wish I could play that. Oh, I wish I sounded like him. Oh, I wish I sound like her. You take the time instead of being wishful about it and you set some goals, okay? Now, number four is that professionals are planners, okay? So a goal without a plan is only an idea. So you need a plan to fulfill the goal. What amateurs do, they wing it, okay? They wing it. So they plan it. So let me write this a little different, okay? Amateurs, amateurs wing it, professionals plan it, okay? So they are planners and they are wingers, yes? So when they go into the practice room, they have, they don't practice deliberately, they noodle. They don't have any goal, they wish they could do it, and then they always end up winging it, okay? So you have to plan it. How are you going to get from point A to point B? How am I going to be able to play this particular technique in two days, in one week, and so on? And so several years ago, one of my late friends, God bless his soul, we were going to take a trip to go to Myrtle Beach in South Carolina, and so we made a plan where we would stay, how long we would stay, and then on the table we decided that we could fly or we could drive. Now, I was in my early 20s and I loved driving, and therefore we decided that we would drive because I wanted the experience of driving across several states. And so he got the car serviced and gassed up, and then we made our plans. We had a road map, we had a GPS, we printed out the route, we gave ourselves basically 0% chance of getting lost, right? And so we had two boxes of ice in the car as well. One that had our liquids and fruits and one that had home-cooked meals that we were taking along with us on the journey. Now, the journey was 685 miles from New York to Myrtle Beach in South Carolina, and that would take us 13 hours. And so we decided that we didn't want to drive much in the night. Hence, we left at 6 a.m. in the morning. We also decided that we would take turns at the wheel. And so every three hours or so, we would switch seats and I would drive and then he would drive and so on. And we would take breaks at the rest stops and so on. So we had a plan of where we were leaving from, where we were going and how the trip was going to go, how it was going to happen. So you have to have a plan. So instead of winging it, because if you have no plan, you will just end up somewhere. We didn't want to just end up somewhere. We wanted to be at Myrtle Beach, okay? So we had to have a plan. Number five, professionals uses a practice log. Because a goal that is not written, again, is just an idea. Amateurs keep it all in their heads, <laughs> okay? So the goal of the professional is not just to check the boxes. He needs to measure and he needs to track what he's doing because you cannot measure what you can't track. So yesterday you practiced and you could have played this particular technique at 100 BPM, you need to be able to refer back to that. But the amateur keeps it all in his head and then he doesn't have any practice routine, he doesn't have a practice log, and so he takes up his horn maybe once per week and each time he goes back to the practice room, he's thinking, oh, what was I working on again? How fast could I play this? If you had a practice log, you could just flip back through the pages and you could see where you were at and then you could move forward from there. And then you can do this in a simple notebook or buy a planner online. These things are very cheap, okay? So the professional keeps a practice log. So in order to really achieve your goal and to start sounding more like a pro and less like an amateur, you need to start taking stock and keeping track of where you were, where you are, and where you're headed. Number six, professionals use time efficiently. Okay, amateurs waste time. So in the practice room, 
the professional knows that he has one hour to practice. And so he's going to use that time accordingly to really hit his goals. The amateur goes into the practice room and he's not focused and so he wastes a lot of time because he's checking his social media feeds, he's distracted and all of that. In order to really hit your goal, you need to use time efficiently. And so the professional knows he has an hour. So he breaks it into three parts and he uses a technique called the Pomodoro technique. He practices for 20 minutes or 25 minutes, then he takes a five or 10 minutes break and he goes back to it and he works on something else and then he takes a five or 10 minutes break after those 20 or 25 minutes and then the last set and he does it like that until he gets to his desired goal, his desired destination. Amateur wastes a lot of time. He has 20 browsers open and he's so distracted. Maybe he has a TV on as well, okay? So to fix that, you need to change things around and start thinking about your time more than you used to, okay? Number seven, professionals break things down. Amateurs make the mistake of being overwhelmed. So the professional understands that music is like the Great Wall of China. It took 24 years for them to build the first part of the Great Wall of China. And it spanned nine dynasties and over 2,400 years to be completed. Okay? Music is like the Great Wall of China. It's never ever completed in your lifetime. There's only so much of it you can build, so much of it you can learn, so much of it you can practice. The amateur sees the Great Wall of China and he's overwhelmed already. Okay? But the professional understands that he just has to show up every day and lay one brick at a time. One, one brick or a few bricks. Okay? And then over a period of time, he will be able to build a portion a musical wall, a portion of the musical wall. The amateur overwhelms himself by going into the practice room and what he does, he sits there for three hours and he tries to build the entire wall in three hours. And therefore his embouchure is hurt, his fingers are hurt, his back hurts, his neck hurts, all parts of his body aches and pain, okay? So <clears throat> you have to break things down. How are you going to learn this particular technique are you going to learn it bar by bar? Are you going to learn it phrase by phrase? How are you going to learn it? And so I look back at my college experience when I went to college over a decade ago, almost two decades ago, that when I got there, there was this list of courses that I had to do over the period of the program. But it was outlined for me, right? Four years was the long-term goal. And all the courses that I needed to have done were there, but then it was broken down so I could see what I would do in year one, year two, year three, and year four. And then it was further broken down what I would do in each semester. And then in each semester, what I would do each week, because I would get a course outline for each course, and then what I would do each day. So it was broken down further into hours, right? So it's broken down into bits and parts that are manageable. So instead of me focusing, oh my gosh, I have 200 courses to do or whatever it was over a four year period, all I needed to focus on was what am I doing today, this week, then next week, then next month, then this semester, then that semester. And after a while, the four years would come and I would happily complete my course of study. So when you go into the practice room, instead of seeing the Great Wall of China as being that overwhelming thing that you need to learn so many things, a gazillion of things, you break things down into small bits and pieces, and as you add them up over time, it will compound, and you would have made your musical wall. Number eight, professionals build B-U-I-L-D, routines, or practice habits, okay? Amateurs are what I call vibers, okay? So the professional knows that he needs to get to a certain point. So he has to get up every day and he's going to spend one hour at the same time, at the same place, working on his craft as a musician. 
The amateur, he plays when he feels the vibe, okay? When he's into his feelings, when he feels the vibe, when he feels like it, or when everything is right. And he practices on Sunday for three hours and then puts his horn down and two months later, he takes it out. So he's a viber. He only plays when he feels the vibe to play or practice. But the professional makes it into a routine, like waking up each morning and the moment you go into the bathroom, you brush your teeth, shave your face, wash your face, and it's almost effortless because it's a habit. It's a routine. So you fix that by making a plan of action, turn it into a habit by turning up every day at the same time for the same amount of time and you practice on your horn. Number nine, professionals rinse and repeat. Amateurs, I call them three timers. So the professional knows that in order for something to stick, he has to repeat it a hundred times, maybe a thousand times, okay? The late Kobe Bryant, I was watching an interview once and he said that he would wake up at four in the morning and he would go on the basketball court and he would not leave until he would have made a thousand shots that landed in the hoop. Because he wanted to train his brain so that when he was under pressure, it was an automatic response. Three timers, it's, it's like the saying, right? Last in, first out. So if you learned something yesterday and you only practiced it three times, you can bet your best bet tomorrow you will not necessarily remember it. So in order for your brain to recognize it as being very important, you need to practice it more than three times, okay? You need to rinse and repeat it. Practice it over and over and over and over until the idea sticks. So if it's your sound, you need to work on your sound over and over. If it's a technique, you need to work on it over and over and over until you get it. And finally, professionals seek mentorship. Mentorship. Amateurs think they know it all. Okay, so the professional understands that he can only see as far as the tip of his fingers, but the mentor has some experience and some knowledge that he doesn't have and he wants to know what the mentor knows so that he, the professional, can grow. Right? The amateur thinks he knows it all or thinks he can know it all by himself and therefore what he could have learned in three months from a mentor, he takes three or five years learning it on his own. Get the point? So if you really want to take your sound, if you want to take your playing to another level, then stop thinking that you know it all and seek mentorship. Now, I do hope that you found the information that I shared here transformative. Do remember to give us a like. Do remember, give us a like and subscribe to this channel. It helps. Thank you very much. And as always, Axel Friend, push, play until something happens. Peace.